Kia ora, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor, as well as education advisor, coming live once again from beautiful Hamilton in New Zealand. Uh, bit quieter, uh, obviously, we are into our third week of lockdown here in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, yeah, things are kind of uh, getting into their own routine and normal as uh, life uh, tends to go on uh, and as humanity adjusts to a new normal. Uh, but here we are, uh, three weeks into the lockdown here in New Zealand and things are pretty all right, you know, to be honest. And I'm, uh, you know, uh, sitting here comfortably in my home in Hamilton like every uh, Monday and coming live on Facebook, YouTube and on Instagram. So warm welcome to all the wonderful people uh, who keep joining in uh, on my live broadcasts and uh, getting you the latest updates uh, as always every Monday. Hey, look, that's my license, everybody. Uh, the license that allows me to sit here and uh, provide uh, information as a licensed immigration advisor uh, and to be able to discuss uh, uh, things, information and services that uh, pertain to New Zealand uh, education and migration for international clients. Uh, and so we at Team uh, AJV Services, we cater to a very large number of people from different parts of the world. And uh, I'm happy uh, to be here back again this Monday and talk about uh, the way things are here in New Zealand. Cool. Let's get on with a very, very quick update uh, of what's happening in New Zealand. Uh, so what's happening in New Zealand is that we have unfortunately reached five deaths uh, in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, so our uh, total number of people who have succumbed uh, uh, to uh, this particular uh, disease uh, here in New Zealand uh, is five at this stage. But the good news, uh, uh, of course, condolences to the uh, family members of all these uh, five people who have by and large been you know, uh, elderly people. Uh, but the good news is that uh, the number of new cases for us here in New Zealand is coming down. Uh, also, so we have a total confirmed cases of 1,064 even as we speak today, uh, and 546 people have recovered, and there have been five very unfortunate deaths here in New Zealand. This as compared to 1.85 million uh, confirmed cases worldwide, 430,455 have recovered, and there have been just a little above 114,000 deaths uh, globally. So when you look at uh, the um, uh, deaths we've had here in New Zealand, it is just five at this stage. Not that it is something to gloat about or uh, you know uh, talk about, uh, but hey, look, you know there has to be a uh, a positive in every. Uh, gloomy, uh, you know, outlook. Uh, so thankfully for us, the government here has been doing a fantastic job of uh, uh, ensuring that this lockdown com comes out with the uh, sort of uh, required outcome or the desired outcome, uh, which is to stamp out this uh, uh, epidemic or pandemic completely here in New Zealand, uh, and then you know, uh, kind of you know, uh, hopefully go back to some amount of normalcy. The government is really, really. Uh, kicking in and ensuring that uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, give me a moment guys. Uh, uh, I'm just uh, checking to see if I'm still going live on Facebook. So uh, give me just a moment. My team seems to indicate that I'm not going live, but it does say I'm going live on uh, my Facebook page here. Yep, I can see that I'm also getting some uh, uh, comments. So yeah, I think that's all fine now. Okay, so the government is working very hard and I think the government of New Zealand is also being uh, praised quite a lot by various people across the world. Uh, there was a, an interesting article from the Washington Post and uh, even CNN went on to say that uh, the government of New Zealand is sort of setting a benchmark uh, for the way that uh, a, a public health crisis like the COVID-19 needs to be addressed and that's what is happening. So. All said and done, yes, despite the unfortunate five deaths, uh, uh, by and large, uh, New Zealand, I think, is uh, uh, working very hard on controlling this uh, 
uh, pandemic. And uh, I think more than anybody else, I think New Zealand uh, uh, as a country, I think will uh, jump out of this uh, sooner than uh, other countries. Uh, and there was also a report which said that uh, uh, New Zealand is the third safest country to be in uh, in this particular time of a global health crisis. Uh, apparently, the other countries are uh, Israel and Singapore, uh, and New Zealand is being, you know, rated very, very highly for the efforts that are going into uh, addressing this particular uh, issue. And uh, you know. Uh, going ahead. As a citizen living here in New Zealand, uh, as somebody who lives here in New Zealand with my family, I'm very relieved, uh, to be honest, uh, that this country and this government and the leaders and the people have come together as one to address this particular issue. And I think everybody is cooperating. And I, I, as I keep saying, if anybody is going to lift all these restrictions at the earliest and keep going uh, into some sort of a normalcy, uh, I believe it is going to be New Zealand as compared to a lot of other countries. So, uh, and um, I would also like to uh, go back to some of my uh, team members and they raised a few concerns which uh, they wanted me to address. Uh, and uh, so one uh, was from my colleague uh, Neha Segal, uh, who uh, helps our licensed immigration advisors to work with those uh, who are applying for their uh, spouse uh, work visas or visitor visas. Uh, and she is urging everybody uh, to start the process and continue the process uh, of applying for your spouse a visitor or work visa. Because for us at uh, AJV, it is business as usual. We are all uh, uh, very well trained in working from home and working uh, through an online medium and me coming live is also part of the same effort that we put in uh, to make sure there is no disruption in our informational services to all of you. So Neha urges all of you uh, to go ahead and apply uh, because for us at AJV, it is business as usual. And she is also urging all of you to uh, go ahead and apply with, uh, with, with or without your police clearance certificates and medicals because uh, Immigration New Zealand is also making a few uh, adjustments to the way they work and they are taking on board uh, some of these applications. And I guess at the right time, they will ask for those extra documents to be submitted. Um, another concern raised by one of my colleagues called Navya, uh, who as you all know, is also a licensed advisor, just like myself, and she comes live on uh, sometime later this week. She says that some people are also concerned uh, with the decisions uh, the Australian government is taking regarding the closure of borders. Uh, since the two countries are often uh, looked as through, uh, through the same lens, uh, it would be good for us to you know, talk to you about the difference in the coronavirus cases, uh, which is like, the, you know, is that uh, New Zealand has got only one sixth of the cases that Australia has at the moment. Uh, and uh, I think the way we are fighting it is also has been so much more dramatically effective as compared to many other countries. So I think it is very important for those of you who are considering to come to New Zealand, not to wander, not to kind of look at us with the same lens as you would look at Australia. Uh, yes, a lot of people tend to think that down under means uh, both these countries at the same time, but hey, look, we're two uh, separate sovereign nations and uh, uh, we have uh, our individual ways of dealing with this and we are not Australia. And like I said, our number of cases is actually coming down and I think our government is doing a fantastic uh, effort of controlling this. So do not, uh, uh, you know, uh, put us in the same bucket as Australia. Uh, they are dealing with it in their own way, but I think New Zealand is dealing, dealing with it in a much more, uh, I think, uh, proactive sense. And uh, you can see the numbers, you know, they're actually beginning to come down and uh, uh, we have not been, our hospitals have not been overwhelmed, uh, nor have our, you know, emergency services been overwhelmed. So yeah, don't uh, put New Zealand and Australia together. Uh, and uh, what else, uh, my team, uh, also has asked me to talk about the July intake uh, because a lot of students are apparently asking our team uh, whether this particular intake is getting deferred uh, and uh, whether how all the processes will be affected uh, towards your admission and visas uh, because of the lockdown and not being able to, uh, you know, go and write your IELTS or PTA 
exams and not being able to approach banks to get your loans uh, or, you know, uh, some of the other things like police clearance certificate and uh, medical. So my advice to you on that is behave and act like July is going to happen because we are still in the middle of April here in, uh, you know, uh, globally. Uh, so we have the whole of May. So we have half of uh, April. We have the whole of May and we have the whole of June. And we will also have half of July uh, before the intake uh, kicks in because most courses start only from the middle to the end of July. So when we, we kind of count forward, uh, if we take half of April, half of July and May and June, that's three whole months. And at the rate, uh, New Zealand government is kind of attacking this particular pandemic and controlling it. And I think they're doing a fantastic job. I do believe that July intake is a distinct possibility. Worst case scenario, it might get postponed or deferred by maybe a month or so, but we have not got any intimation yet from any of the institutions that we work with. And most of them are working from home. And you know, I keep getting a lot of uh, emails and intimations and information from all these institutions. None of them have told us yet uh, that there is going to be a, a deferral of this intake. So my sincere request to all of you would be to work uh, and act like it is normal. Yes, some of you are not able to apply for your IELTS or write your PTE or apply for your loans, apply for your, uh, you know, uh, PCC, uh, your police clearance certificate, as well as your medicals. So do everything else that you can, because these are just three or four components. Whatever else you can, you know, for instance, for your admission, you really don't even require the IELTS because we can apply on your behalf with just your passport copy and your uh, uh, academic uh, transcripts and uh, certificates. And we will still be able to get you something called a conditional offer letter, which will come with a condition stating that uh, IELTS is missing and that you will need to provide that IELTS post which it will become an unconditional offer letter. So my sincere advice is act and behave like it is normal and uh, Yes, there are certain things that you're not able to get uh, uh, into the uh, process. Uh, uh, we, you can go back and get those particular missing elements as and when you know things get back to norm normalcy. And I think the big message I want to drive is that if anybody is going to get back to normalcy uh, quicker than most others, I think it is going to be New Zealand. I don't say it because you know I'm a, a person who promotes New Zealand. Uh, I just as a guy who's living here and experiencing the you know, the coming down of the uh, number of cases and just the way the whole society is behaving and going about like it is, you know, business as usual. I do believe that uh, New Zealand will bounce back uh, uh, very, very uh, quickly. Um, and uh, so uh, there is also an update to us from the, you know, one of the institutions that we work with. Uh, that, which says, and I'm going to read this out, it says, you may have many students who may have booked for an IELTS exam, which is delayed due to the current lockdown. Uh, you may now encourage the students to use the language exam called Language Cert. Uh, this test can be taken by uh, the student while at home and may just need access to a good PC uh, with a camera, headphone, and good internet. The test can be booked and taken within a span of five hours and results are announced much earlier than IELTS. So there is something called language cert, uh, which is, seems to be a good uh, uh, alternative to IELTS and PTE. Uh, and uh, the same institution uh, comes back and tells us, please note that these results are accepted by us as well as other educational providers of New Zealand, along with Immigration New Zealand. Uh, please uh, refer to the link below for the language cert, as well as NZQA table, which is the New Zealand Qualifications Authority that accepts various forms of English test. Play and you know this institution has asked us to share this information uh, with our students, which is all of you, uh, as this may lower the wait time for an IELTS once the lockdown is lifted. So I think that is great information right there uh, about this thing called the language cert, uh, which I'm obviously thinking is a, a short form for certificate. And there is a good link uh, for uh, language cert. In fact, there is a website called languagecert.org. I will talk, I will I'll just spell it out. That's L A N G U A G E C E R T dot O R G, which is language dot O R G. And so I think that's that's uh, going to uh, really uh, uh, help you guys who are stuck for your uh, IELTS or your 
uh, PTE exams. All right, cool. So uh, what else? Uh, my team has also, uh, you can see that they are equally concerned, uh, just like all of you. And, you know, they, because I come live uh, first uh, in the week, uh, they've kind of uh, put all their concerns up there and said, hey, Arun, can you talk about those? Because we're getting all these queries from our students. So I think I've addressed most of them. And uh, I think the last thing they wanted to talk, me to talk about was the fact that the Prime Minister uh, of New Zealand, uh, Jacinda Ardern, uh, so she was in the latest, uh, uh, you know, uh, live conference or speak, uh, uh, the uh, press conference. She has talked about uh, the fact that it could be a while before the border controls are uh, lifted and uh, the restrictions that have been imposed are taken away. But hey, look, you know, like I said, she's got a job to uh, protect New Zealand and uh, protecting New Zealand would ensure will mean that we've got to do things in kind of a sequence. Uh, so we obviously can't open the borders while we are still fighting a pandemic uh, within the borders of the country. So I think that what the government is doing, and I think it's a very smart move. I would have done exactly the same thing, you know, if I were in a position of authority and I had a choice between locking it down completely, stamping out this uh, uh, epidemic and then opening the borders, maybe in a controlled fashion, uh, maybe they will let people in uh, to uh, come into the country because the, uh, as a uh, nation new zealand depends a lot on uh, people being able to cross our borders whether it is tourists or uh, international students or migrants or workers uh, so once this uh, restriction is lifted uh, and i think once the government kind of stamps out this particular malaise uh, from within the borders i'm certain we will uh, lift the border controls yes she said it might take a while so Again, like when uh, take a while can be anything between four weeks to eight weeks. So, you know, we don't know how long it is. So even if it is uh, eight weeks from now, uh, because, you know, like I said, this country uh, has to open its borders uh, sooner than later, because we depend a lot on the revenues that also flows across the borders along with people. So obviously for the prime minister and her government, uh, the uh, first priority is to stamp out uh, this uh, uh, disease. And then, of course, you know, do a staggered uh, uh, opening of the borders so that, you know, uh, commerce and uh, economy sort of comes back to uh, normal. So, yeah, I think it's just a normal, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of a reaction, I would think. So nothing to be alarmed about if the prime minister said uh, that the borders will be closed for some more time, because, like I said, we've got to fight the fire inside uh, first and stamp it out and then open the borders and let people in. And I'm, Certain, you know, right now, even as we speak, uh, the uh, different uh, uh, decision makers and different departments across the government are working on, you know, creating policies and uh, 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 rules which will help us to open our borders, but, you know, uh, in a, a controlled fashion so that we don't let back uh, COVID-19 into our borders. I was speaking to, uh, I've been speaking to a lot of people from our industry uh, from the you know immigration fraternity and uh, somebody said that Japan has got some kind of a system where people have a card which says that they have been tested or that they are free of COVID-19 and uh, so you know I, I think all governments will be looking at I heard somebody else mention that uh, Canada might consider opening the borders but putting everybody who uh, comes in as an international student into uh, quarantine for uh, you know uh, for 14 uh, days so I'm sure New Zealand is also studying the situation and what other countries are doing and uh, we will uh, come out with these solutions as well but i think what is happening right now is a very good strong uh, fight against covid 19 and the numbers are quite positive yes a few more unfortunate deaths uh, uh, especially from the elderly community but uh, i think we're doing a fantastic job of controlling this thing and i have a feeling it's my personal opinion and i was talking to a colleague of mine today i think we are going to have a massive, massive surge of people wanting to come to New Zealand as soon as our borders are open, uh, because, uh, you know, the whole world press has been talking about how well the government of New Zealand is fighting this particular pandemic and uh, how safe New Zealand is as a country. And, you know, at some stage, human beings, even those who want to migrate, would be looking at their personal safety and health uh, as much as, you know, any other uh, aspect of uh, or, uh, or, or a driver and I think because New Zealand is coming out with such a stellar performance uh, in this fight against COVID-19, I do believe that uh, New Zealand is going to uh, go up very dramatically in the uh, in the list of desired destinations for international students uh, and migrants because there is going to be a massive rush 
I strongly urge all of you who are uh, already talking to HOV and in the process to continue to do it because there's going to be a massive pile of applications. So if you're continuing to work with us, we will ensure that your application is uh, sort of uh, being looked at and uh, ready to be launched as soon as Immigration New Zealand uh, opens its doors. All right, guys. So that's my opening uh, uh, spiel for today uh, about uh, and an update on what's happening in terms of uh, COVID-19. So here's our first question. And uh, quite a few of uh, our regulars have joined in. Sunando Basu, um, uh, I can see O'Neill as always. Hey guys, hi Sunando, hi O'Neill, and I can see Ravi and uh, uh, quite a few other people have joined in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now get on to the um, questions. Before I get on to the questions, uh, uh, as is our norm every week, uh, we are also supposed to uh, talk about a particular institution in New Zealand. And today the uh, uh, occasion is to talk about the Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki, uh, which is called WIITT, uh, which is WIT, short for Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki. So the so this particular institution, it's an Institute of Technology uh, and Polytechnic or ITP as it is called. And as I mentioned last week, uh, uh, all ITPs in New Zealand, uh, we had about 16 of them, uh, have now merged and come under one nice big broad umbrella uh, institution, so to speak, called the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology. But the interesting thing, and you know, I've been in favor of this particular move because I think coming, bringing it all together under one, you know, umbrella makes it a lot easier for administration. But what's happened is that although NZIST has been formed, and I believe NZIST is just an interim name before they come out with a more uh, Maori uh, sort of a name. Uh, so NZIST still has got 15 subsidiary boards uh, uh, and one national council. So so all the ITPs which were operating, whether it's Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki or here in Hamilton called uh, Waikato Institute of Technology or Eastern Institute of Technology uh, in Napier, so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, while they are coming under the umbrella of NZIST, they are uh, still having their individual subsidiary boards and uh, I think the whole idea of an ITP anyway was to cater to uh, different particular regions and which is where the Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki uh, has uh, served the population of the Taranaki region very well, not just for domestic students, but also for international students. Uh, I, as, as I keep talking about every ITP, it is owned and operated by the government of New Zealand, now working under the umbrella of NZIST, but it's also got its own individual board, which is like uh, one of the more recent occurrences for all ITPs in New Zealand. It's as recent as the 1st of April. When you're coming to study at uh, the Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki, you have many choices. Uh, you can choose from administration, adult teaching and training, arts and design, business and management, energy, oil and gas, English language, fitness and sport, uh, foundation studies, hair and beauty, uh, and there is hospitality, there is information technology, there's Maori language and culture for anybody interested in that. There's mental health, mental health and well-being. There's nursing and healthcare. There is uh, primary industries. Uh, there is second, uh, and uh, there are also trades. Uh, trades would include uh, things like you know welding, plumbing, you know trades which are. Uh, useful for you know uh, general business and trade, uh, so they are called trades as well. So the Western Institute of Technology, Taranaki has got a whole host of them. It's got uh, uh, courses starting all the way at the master's level and going down to the diplomas and certificates as well. Uh, although for international students, by and large, you would be looking at a level seven and above, which is your bachelor's, graduate diplomas, or a postgraduate diploma and master's, which is eight and nine. Uh, so that is what uh, went. So the one thing when I talk about it, and I've been to this campus a few times, so I'm going to give you my very personal uh, input about wit uh fantastic campus uh it is in a city called new plymouth uh, which is on the uh western coast of the north island of new zealand uh and it's got this beautiful uh you know uh, uh mountain uh, called mount taranaki which is always in the background of this city there's a beautiful uh, it's on the beach so the city is very beautiful and uh yeah it's a bustling town and i remember from uh 
my memory that a lot of our students uh, who went to wet uh, chose to uh, go for culinary hospitality and those sorts of courses and have done really, really well. Uh, and one of the other interesting uh, offshoots or schools of Western Institute of uh, Technology Taranaki is the New Zealand Institute of Highway Technology. Now the NZIHT is an integral part of WIT and the NZIHT campus is located in Hamilton where I'm sitting and talking to you right now. In fact, it is like right next to the uh, AJV office uh, here in Hamilton and this, this particular institution I think uh, is, a, is a master stroke from uh, WIT because uh, this particular institution focuses only on highway technology and they have some fantastic courses there and as a country you know New Zealand has been working towards creating better infrastructure for our, our country uh, uh, for our nation and uh, highways of course you know would be one of the key elements of any infrastructure development and so this particular course is focused only on highway technology and a lot of our students have been going to the New Zealand Institute of Highway Technology. I had the opportunity of inviting the head of this particular uh, you know, a course uh, to come and have a one-on-one -on -one chat with myself and some of my colleagues at the office here in Hamilton. And uh, some of our students who are already studying here have also given fantastic feedback about this course. And I personally live opposite uh, a new highway that is being constructed. Uh, this is the highway that connects uh, the southern part of New Zealand with the northern part of New Zealand. So if somebody's traveling from Auckland and they want to go down south uh, to places like Rotorua, Taupo, or many of the Wellington, you know, they don't have to enter uh, Hamilton City and they can bypass and uh, tra uh, travel on this uh, uh, new highway. And it's right outside my window, by the way, where I sit and work, I see the work on it uh, every day. Of course, now with the lockdown, there isn't a lot of work happening. So the NZI, the course from NZI HD is really, really outstanding from WIT. So also their hospitality and their uh, uh, culinary courses have also been uh, quite outstanding for our students and strongly encourage you. We have a great rapport with uh, the uh, managers at uh, WET. Uh, uh, my dear friend Carol, uh, who uh, has been heading international at WET for many, many years, is there. She's a fantastic uh, person who is, goes all out to help international students. Uh, she and her team, I mean, not her just individually, but uh, so overall, they also have a great uh, culture of looking after uh, their uh, students, whether it is domestic or international. The outcomes for our students have been fantastic. A lot of our students who have been to WIT uh, are still in touch with me, and these are people who came to WIT many, many years ago. So yeah, I think overall the outcomes have been good. The college is great, owned and operated by the government of New Zealand. So you have that stability and the and the guarantee that uh, this uh, institution will deliver for you. And like I said, the outcomes of, from the students and their success rate has been very high. So big thumbs up to WIT uh, and to all its courses, especially NZIHD, if you are considering coming to New Zealand and looking for a good institution, WIT is a good choice for you, provided the course you're looking for is there. And talk to us at AJB and we will ensure we put all the uh, details in front of you and we will take it forward from there. All right, thank you. So those are my two introductions for today to give you an update on COVID-19, the situation in New Zealand, and then also talk about WIT. All right, now for a sip of water and then I'll get on with the questions. Okay, moving on. I can now close these windows. Right, let me see what my team has said. Okay, so here's the first question from big hello to everybody who is joined in. Arge Datta says, hello, sir. If we apply without PCC and medicals now, when will we be asked to submit them later by INZ? Also, will applying without these would eventually delay our process? Okay. So here's the feedback anyway, I mean, uh, Argya. Uh, so number one, it won't delay the process. In fact, on the contrary, lodging the application now will make sure that uh, the application goes into the INZ queue uh, and will be picked up sooner than those who apply later. Uh, then yeah, So yeah, and of course, they will ask you to uh, submit the PCC and the uh, medical uh, Argya as soon as they are coming to some sort of uh, normalcy. I mean, a lot of uh, organizations were not equipped prior to COVID-19 to working from home or working remotely. We at AJ, we were probably one of the pioneers of this whole system of working from home and 
we've absolutely perfected this uh, this art of working from home so uh, my understanding is inz is still struggling a little bit excuse me also uh, you got to bear in mind that the deal with a lot of uh, sensitive information like personal details of individual applicants like yourself so that is probably another reason they're uh, taking some time before they start rolling out the work from home so so at the moment there is a temporary hold on processing of applications but like i like you know uh, i told you just a little before argya they will open soon they will start figuring out a way of working from home or some other way and when that happens your application should not get stuck in that big backlog you know backlog of applications so it's a good idea to go ahead and apply even if it is without the pcc and uh, uh the medicals at this stage at least your you know kind of the your place in the queue is uh, sort of taken care of and of course as soon as they start uh, uh processing uh the visa officer whoever gets allocated to your case will come back and uh ask you to submit those documents and you know the pcc takes a few days and uh, medicals also is, doesn't take more than a couple of days, really. So yeah, as soon as the, and they'll give you enough time, of course, to be able to submit this. All right. So I would say, go ahead. Don't wait. Just go ahead and uh, uh, submit them. Argya. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Next question. Uh, Sinando says hello. Hi, Sinando. Yes, we had a fantastic Easter. Thank you. It was a little weird to uh, attend the church service online, <laughs> but yeah, we did have a good one. Uh, Nabin says hello from uh, Nepal. Hi, Nabin. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, okay. And somebody says right now Sri Lanka is the safest. Fantastic. So if somebody is looking for international education or migration to Sri Lanka, uh, please take Ravi's uh, view on that. Um, Vishal Trivedi says, hi, I'm an AJBN. What uh, what intakes will postpone from June, July to August, September? Like I just uh, stated, Vishal, we still have no intimation either from the institutions or from immigration that they're getting postponed. So fingers crossed, but hopefully uh, it won't be postponed by uh, at all. Or if it, even if it does, hopefully it will not be for too long. Uh, Maori uh, Solanke uh, says, I am MBA in HR with uh, one and a half years of experience. I have six band in IELTS. What will be the HR job opportunities at NZ? Please guide me in that. Uh, hey, Maori, uh, the thing is, you know, I keep saying this in practically each and every um, uh, session of mine uh, that uh, uh, we uh are unable to process a request for direct work in new zealand because uh, the problem with working in new zealand directly uh is uh that most employers do not uh, take a positive view of somebody who is not present in the country and who don't have a valid work visa and which is why as an organization we uh, sort of uh, promote the study and work and settle pathway uh, because once you're present in the country let's say you come and do it because you already have a good background uh, and you already have an mba with hr and you also have some experience and you also return your IELTS. so if you're able to come to new zealand and do a course here in this country related to your background then you will get a one two or three years post-study work visa depending on what level of uh, course you study here and when you get that post-study work visa and you're present in the country is when you will have a much, much better shot at picking up a job in New Zealand. And of course, people will say, oh, but I already have an MBA and, you know, why would I invest uh, some more money into uh, education once again? I mean, it is simple. The, the, the investment is to make sure that you are able to find a future for yourself in New Zealand uh, without that uh, step of uh, studying and getting a post-study work visa, you may not be able to get a job here at all. So you, you've got to plan it uh, forward and see how we can take it one step at a time. And there are thousands of people doing it every year. And uh, 
even those with already double masters and even PhD, even they are planning to still come into New Zealand and uh, do a course to be able to become a stepping stone for a further uh, and a future uh, work visa, uh, based on which, of course, they approach uh, employers and seek employment. And then some of them would also be uh, looking at getting residency in New Zealand. So that's what I would recommend to you. Thanks for sharing your number. Uh, one of our team members will get in touch with you. Have a chat, no obligations. Uh, uh, discuss all your uh, options with them. Uh, and at the end of it, if you feel, okay, that's a legitimate uh, uh, pathway for me to get into New Zealand and uh, get an extra qualification and also a work visa and then work towards a job. Great. If you say, hey, look, that's not my cup of tea, so be it. Okay. But at least uh, do uh, engage with our team uh, and get some good information. Okay. Cool. Okay, Adil Ahmed is, says, is any impact on job market in New Zealand? Of course, Adil, I think like any other uh, country in the world, uh, it's not an easy uh, moment uh, for us here in New Zealand as well. I think it's still early days, though. Nobody is still able to gauge what exactly is the uh, impact of um, uh, COVID-19 on New Zealand. Uh, but yes, certainly there will be some impact on the job market. But we'll have to wait and see uh, which particular segments get hit. Uh, right now, hospitality, I think, is suffering really, really badly. Uh, because, you know, without cafes and restaurants being open, people will not go and eat or dine there. So, you know, so that's the reason. So, well, wait and watch. But, yeah, definitely there's going to be an impact here. Right. So somebody called Lovely Person has asked me a question but has not shared the number. Hey, Lovely Person, um, uh, can you be lovelier and share your contact number? Because uh, uh, what we do is uh, I answer questions uh, or well, my colleagues uh, who come live on uh, these platforms. Uh, the way we uh, work uh, is that if you are an AGV student, please identify yourself and we are more than happy to give our uh, information uh, to you uh, and an answer to your particular query. But if you're not an AGV student uh, or client, then hey, look, we would request you please share your uh, uh, number so that you know we will have the opportunity of speaking to you uh, uh, after I give my answer and you know continuing the discussion. So, lovely person, uh, please be lovely and share your number, and we will get. I will answer your question. Plus, uh, one of my team members also will be in touch with you and continue the discussion. Okay. Shovik Manager says, "Hello, Arun. Good to see you. Hope you're doing fine and safe. Do you want?" see the lockdown in New Zealand getting extended beyond 23rd. I wouldn't know, show it, but uh, I think we are now into our third week. We just started our third week and uh, not sure. Uh, uh, at this stage, it looks like we are doing a good job of controlling it. Uh, but um, if it gets out of hand and if there is a spurt in uh, cases again, so I think it's it's a wait and watch game that's happening. Uh, so at this stage, I wouldn't know, nor would I like to comment because it's obviously something I can't be predicting about. Uh, I think I would rather wait and listen to the official statements from uh, the government and share those uh, official statements with all of you. Cool. Uh, there is a question from Nabin Kishore, no number, so I'll have to move forward. Um, Muzi Patan asks a question, no number, so I'll have to keep moving forward. Kritika asks a question, uh, no or number, so I'm just keeping on moving. Uh, Wajid, uh, Finally, there is a question and there is a number there. Okay, yeah. so uh, Amal uh, Rajnand has shared his question and there is a number looks incredibly long, which I'm thinking is also the country code at the beginning and then now uh, the rest of the number. Uh, so his Amal's question is, what, are, what all are the advantages if I chose New Zealand over Ireland for my further studies? as I am finance background and completed uh, BCom. Okay, good question, um, uh, Amal. Uh, I think New Zealand and Ireland are quite similar uh, in the in the way uh, they are structured as countries, in the uh, composition uh, of the population. I think they're almost around the same uh, in terms of population as well, uh, as well as uh, the fact I think New Zealand and Ireland are, only, are the only two countries uh, uh, in this world, uh, which uh, don't have snakes uh, in their country. So uh, that could be an interesting, uh, point, uh, you know, uh, commonality as well between uh, New Zealand and Ireland. Uh, so <clears throat> what are the advantages? Okay, let me see. Um, I haven't been to Ireland, so I will not be able to comment too much about Ireland. Uh, but uh, the advantages of coming to 
Uh, in New Zealand, uh, a month, definitely weather. Uh, I don't think it will be as uh, wet and cold as Ireland would be. Uh, we have a much more temperate uh, weather here in New Zealand. Uh, and we have a very uh, thriving export economy here in New Zealand. Uh, uh, while I think Ireland is more closely linked to UK and, uh, you know, uh, and the European Union uh, sort of thing. For us, it is almost a matter of our survival for us to be able to export our uh, goods and services to different parts of the world. Uh, so we have a very thriving and very strong export economy here in New Zealand. And by virtue of which, uh, uh, you know, there is always a big uh, requirement for people to be able to join all these uh, businesses. And uh, finance is, of course, a very integral uh, part of any business uh, entity so yeah i mean like i said uh, we are uh, the uh, finance uh, again is such a important aspect of most business entities but again this will be true of any place not just new zealand it will be the same in ireland as well so i can't see of many distinct categories of advantages over uh, ireland uh, among except that we our i think the composition of our society is a little different there is a much higher acceptance of outsiders uh, in New Zealand. Uh, the weather is much better. Uh, we always had this, uh, you know, very bicultural uh, platform uh, of the uh, European and the Maori, uh, uh, you know, uh, background uh, or that built New Zealand because of which there has always been a higher acceptance of other races. Uh, so I believe, and then I think the whole mentality of the country is, uh, very different, very innovative, very up there because we have to compete with the uh, big boys of the world. So I think because of all this, I think New Zealand uh, is probably more innovative, probably friendlier, and probably definitely more accommodating weather-wise. So uh, this could be some of the potential advantages, uh, uh, but you know we will talk to you more and see if we can come out with better uh, 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 suggestions than what I just meant, all right? Cool. Right, I have a now, uh, there is another query here. Uh, I'm gonna quickly pause for a moment and check if my team has given me any inputs. <clears throat> okay. Question from uh, Nikhil, uh, who's shared this number. Uh, thank you, Nikhil, I appreciate that. Uh, hi, I'm Nikhil from India. Uh, when can we bring our parents to live here with us permanently? And what are the options before we ourselves get a PR? Any general good things to know number? Okay, so uh, the, uh, the parent category at the moment is under review, uh, Nickel. So the chances of bringing your parents and keeping them permanently here, uh, you'll have to wait and watch uh, how that policy gets uh, uh, worked out going forward uh, and as regards whether you can bring them here before you yourself get your residency and uh, you know wanting them also to live here permanently is a bit of a pipe dream because uh, um, I mean unless until you yourself have permanent residency it will be almost impossible to get your parents here and have them uh, live here permanently with you. My recommendation is to do it step by step. Uh, I'd say you establish yourself first and hopefully by the time the parent category will also get resolved and then you may be able to uh, help your parents also to move to New Zealand. But bear in mind uh, that they'll have to go through the normal process of, you know, medicals and everything else. So, yeah, I'd say stay in touch with us and we will keep you advised about that. Right. Question from Vijay Lalit, but there is no number. So I'm going to move on from there. Uh, there is a question from Danish 31 uh, uh, and he says, uh, share this number. Thank you, Danish. Uh, he says, hi, sir, this is me, Dinesh. I have emailed to my offer letter uh, just one month before. Still now, I'm waiting for your reply. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure, Dinesh, if you emailed me or I don't know who else you emailed uh, uh, in my organization. Uh, I must confess that I am not uh, directly uh, in connect uh, with a lot of uh, our you know, uh, students and clients because we have this wonderful team of people uh, in AJB. We're almost... 40 people uh, spread across New Zealand and India. And then we have one person called Noella who works out of the Middle East. So, and then we have uh, Shereen who uh, works out of Malaysia. So 
Uh, so depending on where you're located, Dennis, your email can get routed to one of these people. I will, you know, I'll ask my uh, team to get in touch with you because you've shared your number and we will try and dig out that email and we will see uh, what is the information you seek and we will give that information to you. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, Next question is from Kevin Lawrence, uh, who says he's an AJVN. Hi, Kevin. Always a pleasure to uh, uh, say hello to uh, our AJVNs. Uh, and Kevin says, I have applied for the postgraduate diploma in engineering at AUT for July intake. Will I be able to make it this July due to uh, Corona or are they going to postpone the start date? OK, uh, Kevin, like I said, uh, I will not be able to predict, but we have not received any intimation from any institution so far that they are postponing their uh, intakes. I haven't received it from a single institution. And, you know, we have about 35, 40 institutions on our portfolio, but not a single one of them has uh, sent us concrete uh, communications saying that uh, uh, there is a deferment of the intake. So I'd say continue with the process like there is no deferment at this stage. And if at all it does come to that, my personal guess would be, I don't think it would be for more than a month or so, because, you know, like I said, international students are very valuable to us uh, uh, and for our economy. And I think uh, the government will put some measures in place for us to be able to bring all you uh, fantastic people, especially those going for postgraduate courses in uh, some of our fantastic institutions like AOT. I think the government will work very hard and uh, put some still you know relatively new this whole uh, corona thing so but uh, at this stage there is absolutely no information that uh, uh, they're deferring any of the intake so i would say kevin hang in there and if there is a deferral at all we will convey it to you but like i said even if there's a deferral i'm sure they'll work very hard to uh, make that as minimal as possible because we need you international students as much as you want to come to new zealand we in new zealand require you guys and girls uh, also to come uh, so that, you know, you can prop up our international education and our economy because you got your international students not only bring in some very important revenue for us, but you also bring in very important skills for us. And there, you know, there is going to be a, uh, always going to be a shortage of workers. So, you know, why even while you're studying, a lot of you will be going to uh, uh, work and earn taxes and pay it into the economy. So I think because of that, uh, you guys will be very uh, valuable for us. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, the deferment, no news yet, but if it is going to be, I don't think it will be for very long. Udari asks, asked me a question. No a number, so I'll have to move on from there. Abhishek G says, uh, hi, sir, I submitted my partnership visa last month, so whether it'll process in Hamilton or Mumbai. And Abhishek says he's an AJVN, so always a pleasure uh, to answer questions from our AJVNs. Abhishek, at the moment, both Hamilton and Mumbai both are uh, sort of not working at this stage. Uh, there is a bit of a skeletal staff of uh, INZ that is working out of Wellington. That's the news I have. Uh, and we've been getting some communications from INZ, but both Hamilton and uh, Mumbai, uh, because of the lockdowns in the respective countries, uh, are not working. Will your uh, application go to Wellington? Uh, sorry, to Hamilton or to uh, Mumbai? We don't know at this stage. Uh, by and large, they will go to Mumbai, uh, but if Hamilton opens faster, maybe they will uh, send it across to Hamilton because INZ would also want to. Uh, clear of the backlog of applications. But at this point, honestly, no information. At this point, more than likely, it is just sitting in the system uh, and waiting for one or both or all the offices to open so that they can start routing. All I know is that INZ has got a way of routing applications when one particular center gets overloaded, they route it to some other uh, you know office so that uh, they can continue to process applications. So just hang in there, uh, Abhishek, and uh, Hopefully, we'll have some clarity on that soon. Prashant Chauhan says he is an AJV client. Hey, Prashant. Good to hear from our other AJV clients. Uh, and says, hi, Arun. I'm AJV client. And says, COVID-19 effect on student partner work visa. 
because we launched uh, visa file on 10th march thank you Aaron. prashant i just answered that question like you said uh, practically all inz offices are closed down worldwide except for a uh, uh, small skeletal staff working in wellington uh, but they are dealing only with high priority cases priority cases uh, so at this stage i think it is all just uh, sort of uh, uh, hanging in there so i'd say just hang in there prashant and hopefully there should be an outcome so yeah right so lovely person has come back and shared this number and it looks like his or her number uh and it looks like lovely person is in new zealand because it's an 027 number and says i would like to enroll at part-time mba at the uh, university of auckland currently holding an essential skill work visa and living in auckland i already had a discussion with mary as she advised, uh, I'm not eligible to study part-time based on my visa conditions. However, I can apply varying my visa conditions to study in a part-time. In this case, will the guy help me on the part-time application? Hey, look, you know, uh, we can do it, but you know, Mary is my uh, senior colleague uh, and she's also a licensed immigration advisor like myself. And uh, she is the boss lady here in uh, New Zealand. Uh, and she's got a pretty big team of people who report to her. Uh, so by and large, uh, you know, if you were on uh, an essential skills work visa, the uh, conditions do not permit you to undertake uh, uh, courses of a particular nature. Uh, but then, you know, you seem to be keen. So we will uh, look into it and see uh, what we can do for you. But hey, look, right now everything is on hold. So let's wait for things to normalize a little bit. And potentially there could be a possibility that there could be a variation of conditions uh, which might uh, allow you to be able to work but like i said i'm not stating it as a fact right now uh, but like i said potentially there could be because immigration law does always provide a few exceptions uh, uh, here and there so you know we'll we will look into it since you've already been in touch with mary uh, suggest you continue to be in touch with her and if there is any possibility whatsoever we will certainly help you all right thanks lovely person Okay. Sir so Patan, Patan Mastan says, I would like to request AJV team to be the AJV students at Wellington after lockdown lifts up, lifts up or after a couple of months. Hey, Patan, absolutely, Matt. You know, we, we would have loved to come and meet you already. In fact, just before this whole lockdown occurred, we were planning our series of meetings with all our uh, AGV students and Wellington was definitely on the cards, Christchurch, Auckland was definitely on the cards, Hamilton was definitely on the cards. So yeah, I mean, we feel pretty bad about it ourselves that uh, we couldn't go ahead with our uh, uh, meeting our students. We love these meetings, by the way, uh, because it gives us an opportunity to finally meet you in person after all the interactions you've had with us. So yeah, promise, definitely, definitely. As soon as this whole thing is, uh, is lifted we will definitely definitely uh come and uh, you know uh, meet you guys and girls because at the end of the day we exist because of all of you so we would love to come and spend some time with you yeah. So there is a question from Kaitan Munasu. Uh, he says, one question, I'm already in, in New Zealand, just wanna know whether Massey in Albany, Auckland or Palmerston North, which one is better? And tell for Masters of Engineering Studies, I already have enrolled and just need advice for campus selection. I'm giving a second opinion to this thought. I'm already a student for VOC at AGV and he has shared this number. Kaitan, um, because you are going to do a Masters, uh, whether it is, uh, whether you go to Palmerston North Campus or you go to um, uh, Auckland Campus, uh, you would still end up with a three years post-study work visa. So in that sense, uh, there isn't a lot of uh, uh, difference. Uh, also, I would think that the number of uh, engineering projects uh, and opportunities in Auckland would be higher as compared to Palmerston North. Uh, so these are the positives in favor of Auckland. Uh, negatives, of course, is that the cost of living is, will be much higher than in Palmerston North. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you're commuting and all that while you're studying uh, could be uh, uh, you know, uh, more costlier um, than uh, if you were living in Palmerston North. So, yeah, if you weigh up all these things, at the end of the day, if you have a good enough uh, part-time job in Auckland, I'd say uh, stay back in Auckland and continue your master's uh, from the uh, Albany campus. 
but if you don't have any uh, fixed work in uh, Auckland right now, like in part-time work, then you know, I choose to go to Palmerston North because the advantage of going to Palmerston North and eventually finding a job there is that you might end up with more points towards your residency. So both places have their pros and cons. Uh, you should be able to take that final call. But I would say if you already have a job in Auckland and you uh, kind of foresee continuing uh, in that particular job, I'd say stick to Auckland, but otherwise go to Palmerston North. That's a beautiful little town. You can establish yourself. And you know, like the old saying goes, you can be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond. So uh, Auckland is a big pond and uh, Palmerston North is a smaller pond. Who knows, you might just go on to become a big fish there. So that'll be my suggestion to you, yeah. A question from Kumar saying, but no numbers, so I'm just going ahead with that. <sighs> uh, Abhinash Baidi asks a question, but that's a very immigration sort of question. It says, I'm on annual leave outside New Zealand and my visa about to expire. Would I get extension? Don't know, my friend, if you still have a job, uh, so you might want to check with your, uh, uh, you know, employer to see if you still have a job. And if you still have a job uh, when immigration opens, of course, you will be able to apply for an extension. But I think for you, it is important first to check to see if you still have a job because, you know, things have changed quite dramatically in the last few weeks. So I'd say check with your employer first. Uh, Udari Apeksha says, what is the benefit of doing PhD? PhD, is it worthwhile than master's? What is the best institute for culinary arts? Is there a good opportunity to get PR for chefs? And what are the other requirements to get a PR by a chef? Okay, so a lot of questions, uh, Odari, uh, uh, pushed into one question. So advantages of doing a PhD in New Zealand, quite a few. Uh, if you go to my channel called uh, Arun Jacob, uh, uh, or if you go to our AJV Global channel on YouTube and search for advantages of doing a PhD in New Zealand, there is actually a very detailed uh, video that I have made and put up there. Uh, and it talks about all the advantages that you have of uh, doing a PhD in New Zealand. Um, so quite a few, you know, if you just pay domestic fees, for instance, and you, know, you will get full work rights and your spouse would get work rights, your kids will get domestic fees and so on and so forth if you're married. So that's one thing. Will it be easier to do a master's than a PhD? Yeah, definitely in terms of time. Uh, your master's you can complete in one year, whereas a PhD can roll on for two, three, you know, four years, depends on how long you're able going to take for your supervisor. So in certain instances, it actually makes sense to uh, do a master's and quickly get your three years post-study work visa and then move into a job because of which you will be able to apply for a residence, whether you do your master's or your PhD, only upon completion of that, you'd be able to get into a relevant job and then uh, look for uh, uh, applying for your residency or your PR. Uh, uh, as regards culinary arts, uh, quite a few institutions, uh, we don't know at what level you're looking for uh, because the PhD at culinary arts, I think potentially is possible, uh, but might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but like I said, you know, you've shared your number, uh, we will get in touch with you and have a chat with you. But and there are quite a few good institutions. AUT could be one. Uh, there are quite a few institutions all around uh, New Zealand which offer uh, good courses in culinary arts. But if you're specifically looking for something at uh, you know, the PhD level, then I think we will need to spend some time with you and then I know suggest you. Thanks for sharing your number. We will get in touch with you and then we'll take it forward. From there. Prashant comes back and says, I'm AJB. I'm going to quickly go back to check if any of my team has uh, provided any information to me. Shawik, there is a bit of a feedback about you uh, saying that your application is almost complete uh, from uh, our team side and waiting for a few documents from your end uh, so that we can launch the application, Shawik. So if you're still watching it, Shawik, uh, that is the feedback I got from uh, Team AGV. Uh, Prashant goes on and asks, uh, it's impossible to know uh, time frame, but as per your experience, can you please tell me a time INZ took for decision and student partner work visa? I'm a little bit scared because in November, my wife uh, is finishing her study too. So Prashant, uh, I could, we know how long it takes to um, uh, for INZ normally to uh, process a uh, spouse work visa, and it normally takes between four to eight weeks time. That's the normal time frame. 
But in this present circumstances, when there none of their offices are open, it will be difficult for us to give a time frame. So I can only tell you that as and when they start uh, their offices again, and as and when their offices are back to working again, uh, it will take four to eight weeks. That's about how long, by and large, most of our uh, stores work visas have taken. So I understand, you know, everybody is going through a bit of uncertainty. I'm going through a bit of uncertainty, whether, you know, uh, when uh, the borders will open or if the intakes will get deferred or not because our entire business depends on you know uh, borders being open and people being able to travel across borders so but the problem is this is much larger than us individuals it is you know obviously something much more than uh, individuals or small you know organizations it is something that's happening at the global level so all i can tell you prashant is hang in there but the moment they start the processing it will take between four to eight weeks time all right yeah, cool. Right, so Joy Royston has said, hello Arun, hope you're fine. I'm not a JV student, but want to be one among them. Fantastic, that's the kind of people we like, Joy. <laughs> I wanted to know about offering Institute of Studies and scope for finance course. I have experience in accounting, my number is, and Joy has shared his number. Uh, hey, look, uh, Joy, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you being candid and saying that uh, you would like to be an uh, you know HIV uh, student and also uh, join AIS. I if you go to my um, uh, YouTube channel Arun Jacob, uh, go to YouTube and search for Arun Jacob, and yours truly will come up there. I actually have a full video about AIS, Auckland Institute of Studies, uh, Saint Helens, a fantastic institution, and it's one of the private uh, colleges in New Zealand that I'm particularly. Uh, fond of, uh, and I think they do a fantastic job with their uh, uh, students, uh, some of us, uh, and a lot of AGV students have been to uh, AIS and uh, they've come out with flying colors. A lot of them have settled well into uh, their uh, employment and got their residence and uh, in a permanent residence and even citizenship. So quite a lot of people. So good choice. I have very high regard for AIS St. Helens. Uh, and I think their uh, business school is also very good. They have uh, business school, they have a tourism school, they have a hospitality school, uh, plus they have an IT school. So I think the business school is also right up there. Thanks for sharing your number. I can see that you're based somewhere in the Middle East. So we will get in touch with you. I'll ask my colleague, Shireen, uh, who looks after all uh, inquiries from um, the Middle East. Uh, so she will get in touch with you. Uh, your, your number will be conveyed to her. So please look out for a contact from Shireen Joy, and we would absolutely be delighted to work with you. Uh, and not only work with you while you're still in your country, uh, but even after you come to New Zealand, we would be absolutely be uh, keen to support you and your path uh, throughout New Zealand. All right. So, yeah, that's uh, something we are looking forward to. And thank you for reaching out, Joy. Much appreciated. Right. Uh, same, uh, so James asks, uh, how could one become an AJV client? Thanks. Nothing. Uh, James, you've already shared your number, so we'll get in touch with you. But for those of you who don't know how to get in touch with us, that's the way you can get in touch with us. Uh, those are our contact details. And by and large, we advise people in India to uh, contact uh, that number the, uh, or that email address. And those who are outside India, we ask you to get in touch with that particular uh, contact details, like the number or the email address, and uh, we will get in touch with you. But James, yeah, thanks for wanting to be an AJV client. We will work our best to make you an AJV. All right. Cool. Okay. I seem to have uh, reached the end of my time. And my team normally tells me, but they haven't. So I'm going to ring the bell myself and tell you that I'm almost towards the end of my session. So I'm going to quickly run through to see if I've missed any important queries. Team, you can also tell me if there is anything important. I should have covered, but I have not covered. So I'm going to quickly run through this. So, uh, right, so they're ready. Please get in touch with us, and we will help you with your query. Uh, there is a question from somebody called 70 Triple C. Please get in touch with us. Uh, brown boy, brown boy tick. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my brown boy is back again. Uh, one of our AJV clients. Good to, good to say hello to you again, brown boy. Uh, Kiara, glad to see you safe and well. Uh, doing great until lockdown. Quick question. When approximately do we expect INZ to 
uh, resume their normal visa categories again it's crisis again and i'd say about a couple of months so give them at least a couple of months to get their activity place kia kaha kia kaha to you as well which is stay strong uh mohammed munir has shared his number um and says he's a barrister and solicitor of the high court of new zealand and admitted to the auckland registry in 2015 and practicing in bangladesh now i would like to migrate please discuss my issue yeah absolutely mohammed munir we would be Happy to, you've shared your number, so we will get in touch with you. Shirin will get in touch with you and give you a call and we'll get more uh, information and see how we can help you. Uh, Tomas Larson says, hello, team AGV. I'm planning to study Master of Accounting and need to know which best three options it is to get accountancy jobs in New Zealand. Uh, hey, Tomas, we'd be absolutely delighted to uh, help you, but I'd say by and large, if you're looking at accountancy, I'd say Auckland, Hamilton. Wellington or Christchurch, but you know, who, who knows, you might end up getting a accountant's job in a small city like Timaru. So yeah, uh, so please share your number and we would like to get in touch with you and give you more information. Uh, what else? Uh, okay, I'm just going through. Uh, Ketan says he's already in Pami. Fantastic, Ketan, stick. if you're already in Pami, stick to Pami, you will do well there because you're already familiar with the place. Uh, okay, uh, Liju Francis says, hi, I'm an AGBM. I have arrived in New Zealand this February. I had come to Victoria Street, passed by AGB office a couple of times late in the evening, so it was closed. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, uh, AGB team, Ruben, Madhvi, uh, Grace, for processing my application smoothly. Thank you so much, Liju. Appreciate uh, your feedback. I'm sorry we could not meet you because of the lockdown, but as soon as it's up, I promise a nice big party uh, and Auckland, Christchurch, Wellington, and Hamilton for all AGV clients. Okay, uh, there's a question from Sunita, but I'm running out of time. So Sunita, we will definitely get in touch with you. We would love to work with you because you're looking at doing a master's in engineering and science. You are the kind of people we want in New Zealand. So we will definitely get in touch with you. Jitu has asked me a question, no number. Jitu, please share your number. Uh, Charles has shared this number and says, I'm not an AGV student, but would like to study a PhD. I've already spoken about PhD, uh, Charles. Uh, we will get in touch with you and give you more information. Uh, uh, Yuvraj says, Arun, uh, please follow up uh, my emails. I have not received any reply from your concerned staff. Certainly, Yuvraj, I will look into it soon after the session. Uh, and uh, Sahil says, I want to do MBA in New Zealand. I will complete my college in 2022. I will get admission MBA without any work experience. There are some uh, who give uh, admissions without uh, work experience, Sahil, and I absolutely love your uh, uh, you know, uh, way of looking forward. You're looking at 2022. By that time, COVID-19 will be a, a dream of the past or just a you know distant bad memory. So sure, uh, thanks for sharing your number. Sahil, we will be in touch with you and give you some information and prep you for 22 and uh, 2022 and last one from Rizwan Basra says, I'm here in New Zealand. What do you think the future will be for international worker here in New Zealand? After COVID, it's going to be a little difficult. Uh, let me not uh, try to gloss it over, you know, and say everything is going to be hunky-dory. I think New Zealand, like many other countries, is kind of uh, fight to get out of this slump uh, that was caused by COVID. But uh, because we're fighting COVID-19 so well, I do believe we will also bonds back faster than a lot of other countries and on that very positive note i would say request one more time all the you people wonderful people who are working with hv or following hv continue to keep your uh, plans uh, afloat new zealand is fighting this really well and if there is one country that's going to jump out of this faster than others and also going to become more popular i believe it's going to be new zealand so once so keep your plans uh, afloat and continue to speak to AGB and we will ensure that we get you back on track as soon as INC and the rest of the people are up and running as well. Thank you as always uh, for following my live sessions. This is going to become a video and sit on Facebook and my YouTube channel. Today I forgot to switch on AGB Global YouTube channel, but I'll download it from my channel and we will upload it there. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Some of my Colleagues will come live uh, further in this week. Please follow them. And uh, we are probably the only people who are giving such constant and frequent updates live from the ground, on the ground, uh, from New Zealand about education and migration to this beautiful country. So stay strong, uh, stay safe, and continue to stay in touch with AGV. 
and we will make all your Kiwi dreams come true. Good night. Bye-bye.